originally a pie tin from an American pie company and now played with by over 7 million people in over 80 different countries, this piece of plastic is not just something people toss with their dogs at the beach on weekends. Welcome back to Ultimate Postman, my name is Lance and here is everything you need to know about the history of the Ultimate Frisbee Disc. Hey, Frisbee, far out. What was the meaning of that? Before we start though, thank you so much for stopping on by and checking out my comment. Thank you especially for those of you who have subscribed. If you like my content, hit that like button, leave a comment below, and remember to subscribe. Let's get to it. What the Frisbee? A Frisbee's fun. It's a flying saucer that you command. Despite being an over-engineered piece of plastic that changes people's lives, the history of the Frisbee can be traced back as far and as early as 1871. My man William Russell Frisbee bought and renamed a branch of the Olds Baking Company in Bridgeport, Connecticut to the Frisbee Pie Company. Notice that spelling of IE at the end. Workers of the pie company would toss the pie tins around on their breaks and this made its way to college campuses nearby where William himself would provide the pies to the campuses. Students discovered that when they threw the pie tins upside down, they would have an enhanced flight and trajectory in the air. I wonder if any of the students use their pie tins to foil a shooting like Marty McFly <coughs> I mean, Clint Eastwood did in Back to the Future 3. Fast forward multiple years and you get a guy named William Frederick Morrison, who he and his future wife Lucille were offered a quarter for the cake tin that they are throwing around that he got for five cents. In accepting the money, he and his wife discovered a new market for a light duty flying disc. I mean, if you were offered five times what you paid for something that wasn't really considered a toy at the time, you would have discovered a new market too. So Walter and his wife started selling flying discs until World War II, where he had to go off and serve in the Army Air Corps. Thank you for your service. After World War II, Williams redesigned the disc to make it more stable in the air and called it the Whirlaway. This, of course, was named after the thoroughbred racing horse, the Whirlaway. I wonder if it being more stable in the air had anything to do with the horse being stored in a stable. And in 1948, after many improvements, he and his business partner Warren Frascioni introduced to the world the flying disc. The public was enthusiastic about this flying disc that you could buy for free, but you had to pay a dollar for the invisible wire. Sadly, in 1950, the partnership ended, but this didn't stop Morrison from trying to redesign and perfect the disc. And by 1955, we had the archetype for all modern discs called the Pluto Platter. And shortly after the development of the Pluto Platter, it was sold to a company by the name of Whammo. After learning what college students were calling the Pluto Platter, Whammo co-founders Richard Nur and Arthur Spud Mellon decided to finally give a brand name to this disc in 1957, going all the way back to 1871's American Pie Company, the disc was now called the Frisbee. Frisbees are sold everywhere under a dollar five. Wow. But the story doesn't end here. Wamo hired Ed Hedrick and he had different plans for the Frisbee. Instead of this just being another toy that people buy and give their kids, Hedrick decided to market it as a sport. Frisbee's the game I keep away. You can even run for a pass. Frisbee football. Get mom and dad into the game. Frisbee is wonderful family fun. Terrific backhand. Great catch by Hodges. Michigan needs just one point per game. This is it. Michigan wins to play Guts Takes a Pro. And this greatly increased sales and ultimately led to a professional version of the disc. The professional Frisbee, only from Whammo. Super throws. Super catches by champions. Super flights by another winner. The new Super Pro Frisbee from Whammo. And speaking about professional ultimate, professional ultimate is back for the summer of 2022. And I am with the Los Angeles Aviators. And uh, hold on one moment. I am sporting number 29 for Sam Cooke, an absolute beast on the ultimate field. There are six home games per team throughout the whole 
American Ultimate Disc League. The first game is Saturday, April 30th at 6 p.m. at Occidental College, and the rest of the games are at Occidental College this season. You should stop by, check it out. Tickets are really cheap online, laaviators.com. More league info at theaudl.com. See you guys at a game this season. It'll be fun. Back to the history of the Ultimate Frisbee Disc. The Frisbee is again redesigned with a reworked mold, more mass, raised ridges, thicker rim, and this was all to give it better control and better flight stability. Hedrick went on to become known as the father of Frisbee sports, starring the International Frisbee Association, and went on to develop the sport of disc golf, or as some people call it, Frisbee golf, or froth. He was such the father of frisbee and disc sports that when he died and passed away, he was cremated and his ashes were actually pressed into molds of discs and those discs were given to his family and close friends. Now who here started playing Ultimate and used Whammo as their disc? That was me. Back when I first started, I was using a Whammo. Well, step aside Whammo because there's a new competitor in town. In 1981, Discraft released the Ultra Star disc and in 1991, the Ultra Star became the standard of all competitive Ultimate play around the world. And it's held that position ever since. Compared to the Whammo Frisbee, the Discraft Ultra Star has a slightly wider body slimmer profile and better ridges all to give players and throwers better consistency and more stability in the air. Now we all like tacos and whammos taco and break really easily but the Discraft Ultra Star has a very soft feel to it which allows it to rebound when it gets tacoed and reform its shape pretty easily. A lot easier than the Whammo discs. Sadly, Whammo discs are actually pretty terrible and if you have one, you should do the trick shot that Brody Smith recommends. If you guys have a Whammo disc, this is what trick shot you should do with it. <laughs> bye bye! Bye bye! Now you've had several competitors over the years to the Discraft Ultra Star. You have the Nova Pulsar, which the MLU use. You have the Area Disc. There's even light up discs that you can use to play Ultimate at night, and that's a blast. But time and time again, the Ultra Star remains the king of Ultimate Frisbee discs and is chosen by most players worldwide. If you're looking to buy a disc, the Whammo disc is actually the most readily available in stores. And although no Ultimate players like using the Whammo Frisbee, players will consistently refer to any Ultimate disc as a Frisbee. But the Frisbee is actually a trademark held by Whammo, and now Mattel actually owns the Whammo brand. And remember, if it doesn't say Whammo, it isn't a Frisbee. Now we all need to put the Whammo Frisbee in a special place in our hearts, because without it, we wouldn't have the modern versions of Ultimate, Disc Golf, Hand Jam or Goltimate or any other disc related sports as we know it today. The Frisbee was also introduced to the National Toy Hall of Fame in 1998. Now we could talk about the different types of Frisbees and their uses and all that, but that's content for another video. For now, know that the Ultimate Disc is the most widely used and readily available disc on the market today. So going all the way back to the beginning of the video, the American Pie Company sadly closed its doors in 1958. But luckily for you and me, we can actually go and enjoy American Pie Company pies today. In 2016, Dan O'Connor, a Fairfield, Connecticut resident, Frisbee player, collector, historian, actually got the rights to the American Pie Company and has started reproducing, using their original recipes, Frisbee pies. They've been around since 2017, Dan, if there's any way you can send a pie to California, hit me up. Are you curious about the sport of Ultimate? There is actually a documentary produced a few years back. It's available on Amazon. It's called Flatball, The History of Ultimate. And it's narrated by Alec Baldwin. Thank you again for stopping by so much. Remember to like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed my content. Tell me in the comments below, what's your favorite Frisbee, Ultimate, and disc golf moments? This has been Lance. The Ultimate Postman. We'll catch you next time. And remember, if it doesn't say whammo, it isn't a Frisbee. One dollar wherever toys are sold.